I think it's fair to say that the Jag is in pretty good company this morning. <laughs> Hello one and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass, welcome to Paris, welcome specifically to the Peninsula Hotel where yes, I'm currently flanked by two Bugatti Chirons. Absolutely outrageous. Now, you might be a little bit confused because the title of this video is probably something like driving into Paris to get a croissant. I'm already in Paris. It's because I'm actually about to drive out, about 30 or 40 minutes outside of the city, to a very cool dealership to pick up a car to then drive back in to have a croissant. <laughs> what is life? I don't really know, but as I say, I'm already in a pretty damn good mood. Considering that, yes, there's also an SF90, a Cullinan, a G-Wagon 6x6, a Mansory S-Class, another G-Wagon. Oh, I'm loving Paris this morning. So, welcome to Moteur Essence. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. As I teased, this is a ridiculous dealership just outside Paris. You can probably see over my shoulder there are some amazing cars here. So let's not mess around, let's head down there and check them out. I genuinely don't know where to start. There are so many cars in here that get me excited. I, I actually think I'm just gonna literally walk around and show you every single one of them. So let's start over here. Very nice 718 Cayman GT4. But look at this, Lotus 311. I've actually driven one of these. It's insane. It's a cut price, not even half price, quarter price Monza or Aston Speedster or McLaren Elva. It's a fully visceral and full on experience. I really enjoyed it. Their quirk is hell and quite rare to see. So yeah, big fan of that. Um, a slightly modified McLaren 570S Spider, I believe. Behind it though, we've got a 6 20R, which is ridiculous because that's in a very sort of road spec, beautiful silver paint, painted front bonnet, no decals or anything like that. But again, I drove one of these actually in Luxembourg earlier this year and really enjoyed it. It was a really awesome experience. And seeing this in a bit more of a sort of elegant road spec makes it kind of even more attractive. What a cool looking thing. I sort of half doubted myself when I first looked over. I was like, oh, maybe it's just another modified 570. But no, oh, that is lovely. Lovely, um, as is that very nice uh, Boxster Spider in yellow. Um, just next to it, past these two MG Black Series that we'll come back to, look at this. It's a 930 Turbo and it's brown. This is my dream with the tan interior. <gasps> and look at that steering wheel. Oh my, I'm obsessed. How do I? Can I buy this? Should I buy this? I don't have any money, but this is incredible. I've been a big fan of brown Porsches for a long, long time, and that kind of evolved to, well, me creating the brown F-Type. But this, yeah, this, this, this actual car, a brown 930 Turbo, really the inspiration for me choosing brown on the Jag. Um, but yes, I, I couldn't really not talk about these two AMG GT Black Series, absolutely mad. Uh, drove it on track when it launched, went out in Schmies. Haven't experienced one again, haven't experienced a stock one um, again, but they're pretty cool. They're a lot of money though, aren't they? Seeing these two next to each other, pretty special. I think from the website, one is very low mileage or delivery mileage and one is more used. You couldn't tell which both presented absolutely beautifully in here. Um, that is actually a Mercy Lago with an LP640 body kit, very cool. Um, I didn't want to miss this stunning 612 Scaglietti. I mean, I'm literally spinning on the spot because there are so many cars to show you. Um, back past all the McLarens and the Lotus. Let's continue around here because this is a very highly specced McLaren 600 LT with the roof scoop, an option that you really don't see that often. It was insanely expensive. I think it delayed production ever so slightly. Uh, another 570 Spider, uh, and then this I'm believing is a 993 Club Sport, which is pretty damn awesome to see. I've never experienced a 993, one of those generation Porsches that you know just has kind of got away from me at, at times. So keen to get behind the wheel of one, and that one is again very nice. All the specs here are lovely. Uh, big old Urus, check out this Vantage V8 with the tan interior. Oh. Everyone knows I'm a big fan of that generation Vantage and that, again, yeah, very classy, classy specs. But speaking of classy specs, 
these two are blowing me away. Matching Lamborghinis, Aventador, SV and Diablo, SE30 in its iconic purple paintwork and these two as I say both with that paintwork that, that got launched with the SE30 so unbelievable to see um, I really really wanted to experience this car unfortunately why not unfortunately for me fortunately for the guys here it's been sold <laughs> we did originally talk about maybe me taking this out but yeah someone's snapped it up which I don't blame them because what a thing I mean absolutely outrageous and seeing those two together I'm not a Lambo guy but I suddenly want both of these in my carriage absolutely nuts I also want that oh that FF <gasps> that kind of snuck up on me. Oh, that's a lovely dark red. I don't, that, could that be Rosso Froco? No, it doesn't look quite deep or rich enough to be the triple layered Froco. It might be, it just could be the lighting thing. Uh, if you're thinking, Sam, what are you on about? What's this Rosso Froco? It's basically one of my favorite Ferrari paints and I actually put it on my Abarth when I was doing the Project Biposto. Um, so yeah, it is, it could, it could be, it could be, but it's, it's lovely to see. Uh, another 600 LT. And that's nice, is that? No, that's not a V10, that's an R8 Gen 1 manual. No, not manual, automatic. And it is the V10, wow, okay, go on, look at that. Um, super cool, these, these sort of first gen R8s getting a lot of uh, appreciation at the moment. Um, people are really sort of starting to clock onto the fact that they might be something to jump, jump onto. So yeah, it's pretty cool to see a spider. Now, I walked straight past this ridiculousness, McLaren SLR 722 edition. These things, just iconic. And, and you know, when we think of Enzo and Carrera GT and stuff like that, this really should be held in the kind of same regard in terms of where it sat at its time, just because of the fact that it was more of a hyper GT than a sort of track monster. It kind of gets overlooked. And actually it is weird to drive, but as a thing to see, absolutely unreal and I do think my generation as get more and more disposable income and things like that and push up the value of modern classics these are gonna yeah continue to go absolutely insane uh, now speaking of cool R8s here's another one look at this full Audi sport kitted Audi R8 where you get all these kind of carbon fiber canards and the big rear wing and all these logos and things like that it's pretty full-on I mean you look like you're sort of a safety car at the 24 hours or something um, which this car was actually celebrating but yeah I mean pretty pretty nuts to see one way or another and then <laughs> check this out if you thought the first half of the room was silly it's getting sillier one two Carrera GTs and an F40 with my favorite detail on any French car, yellow headlights. I have no idea if those were stock or from factory. Maybe this is a French car or not, I don't know. But when I see a car in France with the yellow headlights, as were regulations at some point here, it just always makes me so happy and so excited, especially Ferraris. That thing is just ridiculous and flanked by, yes, two Guerrero GTs, one with that kind of um, yeah, reddish tan interior and then one with the black interior. I think that's probably the route I would go um, absolutely outrageous those three are just dreamy as is the HC spider and the vantage is that also like a brown <gasps> oh my god I'm freaking out there's so much in here every time I turn around I see something else that I love okay I need this and I need the 930 turbo and I need to take all three as in with my f-type as well back to the UK immediately that is perfection uh, 720S there, lovely pagoda back there, and kind of like a Nardo grey finish. Uh, is that a 7? No, 720S. I thought it was an LT for a second, but it's not. Beautiful 991 Speedster, one of my all-time favourite cars. I still think it's a car that kind of gets overlooked. People don't realise how good this thing is. Basically, a GT3 that you can take the roof down on. It's just a lovely road car, really fantastic road car. I'd have one in a heartbeat, and I just, I just put the, the roof in the bin. I wouldn't even have it. Uh, um, another nice uh, previous generation Vantage, lovely Bentley Continental, another McLaren, lots of McLaren uh, sports series knocking around, a Bentayga, and then one more of, yes, the old shape Vantage. I mean, what a ridiculous showroom. And it's not even over because I didn't realise these cars were lurking here and I kind of guessed the preparation bay. I mean, it's only an RS 4 litre. That is just nuts as is, oh, a V12 Vantage and a 3RS and a G-Wagon and I mean oh my god look at the seat the seats in the V12 Vantage I'm being told to look at 
Oh, it's got the full bucket seats. That's a super rare option that you never see, except obviously on things like the GT8 and the GT12. That is a lovely, incredible spec. Things continue back here. There's just cars absolutely everywhere. These guys are doing serious business. By the way, weird story. I had a dream the other night that I owned a G-Wagon. It was kind of cool. I've now been looking at G-Wagons on Auto Trader. I don't recognize myself. What's happened to me? I don't know. But I think of all the cars, this is, oh my God, ticking so many of my boxes. Now you're probably wondering with all these amazing cars, what I'm gonna be driving back into Paris for Croissant this morning. Well, actually no, the title of this video is probably given away. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna be taking this. Morgan plus eight. You probably didn't expect that before reading the title. I hope you're not going to kind of be disappointed. I feel like some of you might be like, mm. well, actually, maybe not, because whenever I filmed a Morgan before, lots of you have enjoyed it. The videos have performed pretty well and got lots of engagement because I think we're all quite intrigued by Morgans, aren't we? I really like them. I'm, I'm a bit of a secret Morgan fan. I've been able to drive quite a few over the years and always really, really enjoyed it. And when I was chatting to the guys down here at Motor and, oh, I nearly called them Motor and Sons. That would have been a real, come on down to Motor. Motor and Sons, uh, Motor et Sons, there we go, look at me. Um, we were chatting and as I kind of teased when I was doing the showroom tour, lots of the cars, lots of the stunning cars on display are already sold or, or unavailable for driving. So they gave me a list of kind of what was available. The minute I saw the Morgan, I was like, oh yeah, I want to go out in that because well, there's quite a lot to talk about with the Plus 8 and we'll get into that in a bit. But I also thought it'll be fun taking that into the center of Paris. I'm a Brit, I'm here on a beautiful sunny day in Paris, wanted to get a coffee and a croissant. What a perfect car to do that little mission in. You might be surprised at how easily I fit in a Morgan. Six foot two, as a reminder, but I've always found these cars quite comfortable, and yeah, now I'm in, I'm pretty snug, got plenty of leg room, my knees are actually underneath the steering wheel, quite far back from the pedals. <laughs> bonnet really stretches out in front of me. It's, it's all a bit, it's all a bit different and unique, but that's really part of the fun and the experience. Now, this car, 2012 it launched, so 10 years old at this point, and the key, it's like a really dodgy BMW key. That's because this car got a BMW V8 engine. We'll talk more about it once we're up and running, but for now, I just wanna show you how it sounds because it's pretty impressive. Right, are we ready? Well, I think we are. And that ignition fully on, there we go. Things to fire into life. And... <laughs> that is beefy! That's a beefy Morgan! Okay, let's get out of here. I gotta be honest with you, things haven't exactly been going to plan. Uh, firstly, this GoPro's been playing up a lot, so fingers crossed that this take actually works. Anyway, let me introduce you to Erwan, who I've actually introduced you to four times, but you yeah. won't see that because, well, yeah, the GoPro keeps freaking out. But <laughs> this is my very kind tour guide for the yes. day, uh, and also the man who's organized this whole experience. Uh, the second slight fail is, well, we've been in traffic for about 30 yeah. minutes. What do you think about Paris? <laughs> well, this is the thing. I had these dreams. I was like, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to cut from the showroom to these beautiful Parisian streets, and it's going to be gorgeous in this car. And, well, no, we, we literally just sat on yeah. the Yeah. They did the thing, though. Foreigners think that this exists. It doesn't. I what, mean, the, the idea of the idyllic yeah, Paris? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's, it's traffic, it's a, motorbikes. Yeah. A major city, fumes. Angry, angry people, fumes. A yeah. lot of fumes. Yeah, yeah a lot. <laughs> Which I guess is maybe the realistic side to potential Morgan Plus 8 ownership. It's not all going to be the dreamy driving with the sound of the V8 burbling and the wind in your non-existent hair. There's this part too. Which... Yes, but I don't think a lot of people are driving their Morgans every day to work. No. In Paris. That would be cool if they did. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would, but... Uh... And the third and final issue is, well, we think we've got no fuel. So, so we've got to probably get some fuel before we fuel ourselves when the cross on the car. Yeah, we, we, we think, but we're not sure at the same time because the gauge is moving up. <laughs> it's so confusing. Anyway, I'm not going to pause this recording because I'm terrified of losing this footage. The benefits of having another YouTuber with you is that when your GoPro massively fails, you can just chuck them the camera. So yeah, thank you, Owen. I've, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate the help. Yeah, today's proving to be interesting, continuedly. Uh, but we are now in what I would recognize as Paris. We're off the motorway. Traffic's still not fantastic. Fuel is getting worse by the second. Um, but I'm starting to really enjoy this experience because 
for me this is when Morgans are most enjoyable you're just kind of cruising along and you've got the soundtrack uh, and to just kind of recap quickly uh, this car launched in 2012 uh, it's got a 4.3 litre BMW V8 naturally aspirated around 365 horsepower weighs just 1100 kilos so you can get up and go in this thing. Uh, weirdly, this particular car has an automatic gearbox, a ZF gearbox. I actually didn't know you could get a Plus 8 with an automatic. It's actually pretty good. It's quite nice for, for the journey that we've had. It's saved my left leg getting tired from all the gear changes. Um, and yeah, you know, it's just about driving a car that gives the, the sensations of something from the 1920s, but has slightly more modern running gear. We've got big old AP racing brakes, and this car had the aluminium chassis that you got with the Aero 8. It's, it's super nice. I mean, you're enjoying it as well, aren't you, mate? I am, yes. Yeah, you're having, we're both having a good time. We're just a bit stressed because we're running out of fuel. My GoPros aren't working. We're stuck in traffic. And, and, they, are, and they have a flight very soon. Everyone <laughs> has a flight in about an hour. Yes. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> does get a lot of attention this car it does yes <laughs> yes i mean we've literally been sitting enjoying our very quick espresso and actually i i bought the croissant with me oh uh, um, be, be careful because the french audience is going to know that this is a pain au chocolat and not a croissant sorry be very careful i bought the pain au chocolat with me <laughs> i'm gonna have to retitle the whole video yeah. <laughs> but the amount of people taking photos of this car and enjoying it from the cafe yes. it, it, it just is it's a car that i think you don't get the general like supercar no not at all if we were here in a 488 but there is no no price attached to this you're right there is no price attached to this and i think people think it's a 1920s car and they go oh look some yeah. cool young people in a 1920s car exactly now we're going to ruin all of their breakfasts by uh, oh. starting up the beast <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just a cool car. It's just a cool car, mate. <laughs> what an absolutely mad morning. Huge thanks to Mutter Essence uh, for the opportunity to get behind the wheel, but also visit their showroom. And massive thanks to Owen for helping me out. He's had to rush off to the airport. I'm quickly back in the F-Type because I've now got to head south for this wedding, which I'm attending in France this weekend. So it's all been a bit manic, but it was mega. The stock in that showroom, unbelievable. Super cool to get behind the wheel of a Morgan once again, especially one with a big old hunking V8 engine. We're great to enjoy a delicious pan au chocolat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. And make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.